We bless you, Lord, you are holy. Holy Lord, and forever you are God. We bless you, Lord, you are holy. Holy Lord, and forever you are God. And forever you are God. Ah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And forever you are God. Good morning, brethren. I want to welcome you to today's family devotion. I want to thank God for your life. Please remember to share this message across your content. Let us pray. Our Daddy and our God, we appreciate you for keeping us alive to see another beautiful day. Thank you indeed for who you are in our lives. Thank you for your loving kindness. Thank you for your mercies. Thank you for your goodness. We appreciate you, even while we are here in the background, in the sound of your rainfall, which demonstrates that your love still remains with us. With rains on our side here, we know that you are taking from my away from our country. Daddy, we appreciate you because no matter who we are, no matter what we do, you love us all the same. Be thou exalted in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for your word that you are sharing with us every day of our lives. Constantly there, guiding, correcting, rebuking, instructing us, counseling us, study. We say thank you. We also appreciate you for what you are doing in our country, Nigeria and planet Earth at large. Thank you for all the other works of your hands. Be, you, be thou exalted in the mighty name of Jesus. Our Lord and our God, here we are this morning. We come to you humbly. Repenting of our sins, please forgive us all of them in the mighty name of Jesus. Erase them as if they never happened in the mighty name of Jesus. This morning we're about to hear from you. Please feed us well. Give us the flow of your Holy Spirit this morning until we want no more in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Once again, I want to welcome you to today's um, family devotion. We're going to look at the topic, uh, or let's, our Bible passage is taken from the book of Isaiah 64. From verse 4 to 9. Isaiah 64 from verse 4 to 9. There you have this statement that says, uh, All our sins, sorry, all our righteousness is like a filthy rag before God. All our righteousness is like a filthy rag before God Almighty. Now, this is a statement that makes we, those of us who listen carefully to the word of God, uh, it makes our hearts to be troubled sometimes. We will be asking ourselves, is the Bible not contradicting itself? James 1.27 says that our pure, undiluted religion that is acceptable unto the Lord is in doing justice to the poor, the widow, the strangers, and so on among us. Then um, Matthew 23.23 says we ought to do justice, you know, not going by religious activities and all that we do in our various churches that we ought to do to value justice more than religious activities. Then the same thing with Luke 11, uh, 41. You know, if you read all these things together. Now, is the Bible not contradicting itself? With one hand, it says good works is what you need as Christians. You know, that good works will even help you to make heaven. Then, um, secondly, it is now saying that, you see, good, good works can be, consist, you know, can be termed righteousness because when the Bible says you should do good works, I mean, it can be equated with you or with those good works making you righteous before God. That is justifying you, qualifying you for making heaven. And then, then at the same time, it's now saying that your, uh, all these your good works is like a field of your righteousness is like a field of before God. So sometimes you get troubled, you get worried. I mean, that is if you are an attentive leader to sermons or you are an avid reader or student of the Bible. You will, these are the areas that you get somehow confused. What is God saying? Now, let me say this. Good works, one, are uh, what you are called to do after you have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. John 3, 16, that says, For God so loved the world and gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. So the first priority is, first of all, the foundation upon which your good works can avail you for purposes of salvation is to accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. So, good works without Christ in you. What I'm saying is this. Um, a man who has Christ who ought not to cheat on his wife, ought not to be a fraudster, a liar, you know, ought not to be uh, a thief, ought not to be all those evil to practice all those and many, many more evil practices like alcoholism, 
you know, focusing on luxury, you know, and so on and so forth. A man who has Christ. Therefore, when you have Christ, you want to live a Christ-like life. Christ never did all those evils. So if you trust and believe in him, you are expected to do no evil, commit no sin. In that way, through the umbrella that you have, you, under the umbrella of Christ, you are to manifest good works. You are to manifest good works. However, the second type of person is this. He does not have Christ. He does not accept the Lord Jesus Christ as his Lord and personal Savior. But he does all the good works in this world. He doesn't steal. He doesn't fornicate. He doesn't commit adultery. He doesn't lie. He doesn't, you know, defraud his organization. He doesn't, you know, do any form of evil. Now, all these works, they are good. Like I said, it ought to be the manifestation, the proof of you being in Christ. So the people of the world who do not know Christ at all, they are doing these things. There are so many people that are so disciplined in terms of uh, human righteousness, in terms of obeying the laws. They are so disciplined, but they don't have Christ. If they don't have Christ, then all their good works go in vain. That is why your heart may be pure. Like some, uh, I think somebody would say, oh, well, I didn't wish anybody evil. I, I do good to my people. I do good to everybody. So it doesn't still take you to heaven. All those ones, they are still like a filthy rag before God because of the mere fact that you did not accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. So manifestation of, I mean, people of the world are doing good. So when you now come to Christ, your righteousness is made full, whole. But without Christ, you are still like a bird flying with one wing. But when you have Christ in your life, that's why we always say, first of all, the primary thing is have Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. Once you have him, then your doing justice to the poor, doing good to everybody, will have eternal value. It will have eternal value. If not, they don't have. Christ is the nexus between you and salvation. Then the works of your hands, the good thoughts, the good deeds that you do to people, they are manifestation of being in Christ. And it is when you add Christ plus doing good that you are guaranteed of salvation because your salvation is not earned. The Bible says, for all have sinned and have come short of the glory of God. Romans 3.23. All of us, we are born of sinful will, uh, parents. We ourselves, we inherit sin. So we are all born into sin. But And no matter what good we do, they will not erase those sins away from us because naturally man is inherently wicked and there is no every day of his life he is full of evil thoughts. A man sees a girl, the next thing he talks about is, you know, instead of considering him for winning, considering winning her for Christ, he considers, you know, sleeping with her. Yes, that's the first thought that comes to mind. But when you have Christ, that indiscipline in us is controlled because of the remembrance of Christ will not permit us to do this. And then if for any reason you even fall into it, you repent. Not that you dwell in it and you glory in it. And then you come back to your feet and Christ forgives you. So Christ is at the center of everything. So for you to be talking of righteousness, we're talking of having Christ in your life, developing a personal relationship with him, and then you are now manifesting good works. It is then all these things will amount to salvation for you. Because no man can do good and still make it without Christ being in him. So take note of that. That is, if you are in Christ, you will manifest good works. And your good work will count for faith and will count for heaven, for making eternal life. That's why the Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God. If you know Christ, you seek first the kingdom of God. You are always with him and he guides you. Then the Holy Spirit is now your teacher that teaches you everything and you obey. That is why an average Christian lives in humility because he submits and subjects himself to the direction of the Holy Spirit. So never trust in your own. You may be so good, you may be somebody who promotes your workers, you may be somebody so nice, generous in giving to people. You may even be a church funder. You may be a generous giver to churches or to pastors or to anything. They amount to nothing unless you still have that, meet with that requirement. Having Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. You know the thief on the cross. They didn't pass through all these rituals that you go through. Even baptism, and not because there was no time, but yet Christ saved him. Because what, even though he was a thief, he was in everything, but by the time he acknowledged the Lord Jesus Christ, he remember me when in heaven when you get to your kingdom and Christ accepted me. May we all be accepted in the mighty name of Jesus. So never ignore Christ. There is no good work that can save you, and it's not a contradiction at all. Good work plus Christ amounts to righteousness. Upon which God, now, even as you're, even when you are accepted the Lord Jesus Christ and you still are doing good works, you still commit some sins. This is where the grace of the Lord comes in. The grace avails you, God, the grace of God. Because in your weakness, God is still your strength. God overlooks your sins and you become righteous. God considers you righteous. It's not end, it is grace. It is given by grace. God bless you. Please remember to share 
this message. You see, these things are important. I am so good. I can assist the ones I don't offend anybody in my life. That's the wrong story. Accept the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't struggle with that. Be close to him. Know very much about him. You know, follow his precepts, his directives. And then once you are doing that, the grace of God, then will cover the rest of your weaknesses. You are even anointed, even in your weakness. So God bless you. Please remember to share these messages. Very vital. Let us pray. Our Father and our God want to thank you once again. Again, we keep asking, who would have taught us this truth? We thought in our own human ways that when we do good, hey, we are making heaven and we are perfect, we are righteous. But we are told now, reminded that our goodness or righteousness without Christ in it, without submitting to Christ, is like a filthy rag. Therefore, today we thank you because you have made it clear to us. The grace now for us to combine acceptance of our Lord Jesus Christ as our Lord and personal Savior and then manifest everything Christ-like in doing good, justice to fellow men and justice, I mean, honoring God. Let that spirit come upon us now in the mighty name of Jesus. From now onwards, Father, let us uh, let us have that grace to combine the two, Christ and doing good, and then let the grace that is available to those who do that, let that grace be available to us. Thank you, Father. Bless it to your name. As we go out to the Lord, go with us. I pray for all those who are listening to the sound of my voice now, that whatever situation is in your life that is troubling you, God will remove that mountain. God will make that bad, that bad, crooked way. That God will make things straight. And you shall rejoice again. You are an overcomer. Have a wonderful day. Remember, your righteousness before God without Christ is like a filthy rag. It does not take you anywhere. God will help you and I to accept the Lord Jesus Christ and do good to fellow men and honor our God in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we pray. God bless you. Remember to share. See you again tomorrow.